Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <clears throat> YouTube viewers, I'm sorry, my throat is kind of dry. I think it's my sinuses, my allergies, because I'm having to go outside. But anyway, wanted to just do a quick video just to say hello. Hope you guys are having a great um, Thursday. Uh, so far, it's been pretty quiet compared to yesterday. Yesterday, I had to take my father to a doctor's appointment and ended up having to uh, have surgery because there was something going on with his, uh, his right toe, big toe. It started swelling up, so I asked the doctor to look at it, and he said it looked like it was about to become infected because of the nail or something had grown on the inside, was growing on the inside of the toe. So we had to go to his appointment. Then we had to go to the wound care center to have this little surgery done to clean it out and take off the nail and all that, um, and then go get the medication for his foot, so his toe. So we were both literally exhausted. And I know he was tired because when I went in to fix him, his, uh, give him his dinner, he said he was just, I told him, let me know when you're hungry. He said he wasn't hungry. I said, well, let me know when you get hungry so I can feed you because you hadn't eaten all day. He literally slept the whole evening until this morning. So that kind of warm out, but you know, thank God we got that taken care of and get things taken care of before they magnify, then we're doing great. So. Uh, today, I'm kind of collecting my thoughts. The uh, governor issued out a mandate. Everything will be closed here for a month. A lot of businesses, restaurants, a whole lot of things, they'll be closed. And they're starting to set up shelters and I think uh, some tents for people to, to come and live. I'm not sure that on the tent thing, I'm not sure about that because of the fact that you won't be kind of socially distancing yourself from people when you're in a tent because the tents are set up. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, I don't know what state, but it's the prison. The guy has a, the warden has tent city where they have the prisoners living out in tents and see they're all next to each other in the prisons, in that prison place. So I'm not sure if that's the way it's going to be or not, but a lot of people are kind of worried. And uh, I think the biggest thing that, I feel bad about it. it's people who have who have the virus number one and then those who have lost their lives and who may lose it number two so it's not anything to play with not anything to take lightly i know a lot of times unless something really knocks on our front door we're really not concerned about it and we really don't take heed to those things um that's being instructed to us to do you know during the crisis so to speak um I think they have a curfew here, which I didn't know about until yesterday. Um, and I think it's, I'm not sure if it's 10 at night or something like that. But um, our driver told us that her cousin wanted to go and get something to drink at the store. And it was, I think, about 11 o'clock. And see, so far since the virus has hit, not many people have been going out. And the police and the highway patrol, they haven't been out much. But at, after a certain hour, they are out. And so... He, he just so happened to get stopped by one. And he asked him, you know, what are you doing out where you're going because of the curfew? And he told him he was just going to the store. And they told him, well, you do realize there's a curfew. You're supposed to be in at such and such a time. And I'm not sure how the conversation went, but she said he got a ticket. And the ticket is $1,000. So, like I said, a lot of things we don't take serious until the bad happens or until the roof falls off and then we take things seriously. Um, and it would be wonderful if we would do that before things get bad. And that's what I, I was thinking about this earlier when I was giving daddy his bath and changing the dressing on his foot. It's amazing how our lives correlates with what some happenings in the Bible. Um, if you remember 9-11, I'm just, that, that one sticks out the most for me. 9-11, Hurricane Katrina. Um, there's been others, Hurricane Hugo, and tornadoes and all of that. When something devastating happens, um, it's only when we see as the United States, I put us, that's the time we come together. It looks like in order for us to come together as a unit, country, however you want to put it, it takes a catastrophe or disaster. It takes somebody dying in order to get that. 
And in my mind, I'm thinking, why does it have to be that way? But then the kicker is, we'll come together during that crisis, probably a week, months after the crisis, but then gradually we'll go back to our old way of thinking, the old way of dealing with people, our old hatred and our old old dislikes and our old whatever, the negative aspect of our lives. We go back to that. Um, and I was just reminded when I was sitting here uh, trying to contemplate what I need to do next, isn't that the way it was like in the Old Testament? I say the Old Testament because back then, based on scripture, they actually had God with them, so to speak. Uh, they actually saw miracles being performed before them. When they saw these miracles being performed, um, they would praise God, give God, you know, same stuff we do now, you know, just give God praise and glorify him and all of that. But when trouble came after the miracle had been taking place and God proved himself and showed himself to the people after that, and it passed by, they went back to their old ways. They wanted to worship other gods. Uh, they doubted. They, they, they did whatever it was they could against what they were taught to do, so to speak. So isn't that the way we are today? It takes catastrophe and it takes losing lives in order for us to come together. We can never come together, and I'm talking about as a country, um, to help solve many of the issues that we have within our own towns, communities, states, government, city. But look at what coronaviruses do. Think about it. And again, my heart goes out to anybody who's having to suffer in any type of way with this disease or with this virus because it, it, it's causing a weight. They've already said that more lives have already been lost than the lives that were lost on 9-11. So if you guys really sit down and think about that, that's a lot of people who have already died from the coronavirus. That's not counting those people who are infe infected. We don't know their outcome. We're praying for them, but we don't know the outcome with them. So this, this virus is at a magnitude that's greater than the people who were killed during 9-11. You just consider how many people uh, lost their lives in 9-11. You got to look at the people on the plane and the people, the buildings where the, the planes were crashed into. And if you think about it, that's a lot of people who have passed away from this virus. That's the only thing I hate. It seems as if when God is trying to get our attention, it always takes something bad to draw us to our spiritual place, whatever that may be for you. It always takes us losing in order to come to the realization of how small we really are um, and how we're really not needed in the scheme of things, so to speak. And I wonder sometimes if we ever going to break that chain of thought or that thought process that it, it'll take something negative, it'll take something bad, or it takes something that causes us to grieve, to bring us to a place of peace, whereas we can get to that place without it having to take cost so much. Because believe it or not, when you lose a loved one, take my word for it, and I've lost many, um, I think the passing of my mother and my aunt, her sister, I I was in a depression, I know, for about, it, about five years, depressed. I mean, I can't even describe in words how I felt with the loss of those two individuals. Now, I've lost other family members, but for those two, my mother, of course, and then my aunt, it took, it took me, I know I grieved, literally, five years of depression and lost and void because see those were the two people that I could go to and discuss anything with and I do mean you know everything my life my my feelings my emotions my anger at things or this that 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 those two people weren't there and when I know people say pray I understand that concept as well but sometimes you need that 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 individual body there that person there and see, when they've been there since you were a child and have always been there to guide you, to comfort you, to instruct you, uh, to encourage you, to uplift you, when you no longer have that, it's tough. So that's why my heart really goes out to people who have loved ones or who have family, whoever, that has the virus. And 
those who have lost and just imagine the people having funerals you can't I mean it's just the whole thing the whole system but again the country is coming together as far as us well other countries because it's hitting them just as bad but it took this to bring us to a place of unity or at least acceptance for the moment to get through the disaster but once we're gone through that we'll go back to our old stuff and i'm not when i say old stuff i mean you know how we hate people and we this 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 i'm not talking about the beef sector and all that i mean that's just another whole thing you know for me that's entertainment to a point um i got to give a shout out to uh rick reed he really touched my heart uh last night with his uh live i like him because he tells the truth uh, and then he just went into just some per little personal things. You know, you can see he's a man with a caring heart, so I have to give him a shout-out because I really enjoyed that because uh, you don't find many people who are just real to that extent where they let you inside a part of them, and you can see it in their facial expression or in their, their whole body composure, how that was a, an important aspect of their life. So I just wonder if anybody ever thinks about that. That when things happen, when Katrina happened, though, you know, there were some things that were not done correctly at the beginning. And I'm guessing because they were not used to that. or, In other words, people didn't listen, you know. But when Katrina happened, it's almost like the universe pulled together to help the people of New Orleans and other places. New Orleans was the worst because uh, my uncle and I have another relative. They had to be relocated. They never went back. Uh, to New Orleans, but it was almost if everyone had prayer visuals and candles and all kind of stuff going on, praying together, calling this hour of prayer, and people were coming together and all this and all that, and we were loving each other, and we were, we were considered as one big family in this big country, but as soon as, I can't say, well, as soon as it kind of mellowed out, and as soon as thing, things started to get back into certain places, to where it was fixed, our old train of thought came back and our old way of, of doing things came back and all the whatever we had in us before that may not have been good came back. And I asked myself, when are we ever going to learn the lesson? Remember I told you sometime back, uh, I look at things as a process and there are lessons in life that we go, go through and most of the times we ask ourselves because sometimes we go through the same lesson over and over and over or we go through something similar to what that is and i, t I told you guys before because i look at my life and think about the lessons i've gone through and i flunked so I'm, I'm i'm open and honest about me i flunked them so i had to keep taking them and taking them until it hit in my head dummy because you keep doing it the same way you were doing it before. That's why you can't get out of it, or that's why you can't break free from it, or that's why you can't learn from it. That's where we are. We don't learn from the things that we've gone through and hold on. Well, I take that back. When we learn from the things that we go through, we don't hold on to those things that we go through. And as soon as those things take us through and we can see a little light at the end of the tunnel, we begin to readjust our thinking to the old way we were thinking, just like the children of Israel. And I'm not trying to be religious. That's how my mind works. My mind works. But imagine you seeing the, the what is it? The sea being departed for the Moses and the children of Israel to cross over. Imagine actually if that, you know, like I said, I have some things with the Bible I'm dealing, Bible I'm dealing with. But imagine you standing there seeing this. You're seeing this miracle before you. Imagine this is a, to stop the uh, army from getting to them, to the children of Israel before they crossed over, to stop them so they wouldn't slaughter them. A pillar of fire came from the sky and blocked them from getting to the children of Israel. Imagine you being there and actually seeing that. All of that, you crossed over on dry land. And if you do a study, it didn't, it wasn't, Done in a day. Just go back and look at it. The the crossing of the... Is it the Jordan, Red Sea, Jordan River? Yeah, I'm tired. 
and my mind's all over the place. But imagine you crossing over dry land over a sea that just depart, just split, and the ground is solid, dry, where you can cross over it. You were there. You lived that. You saw that. You experienced that. And to get and to cross over on the other side, but when everything, everybody was crossed over and everybody was safe, you start going back to think the old way, and it never works. It it doesn't work today. Those are the correlations I can make from the Bible, as far as we're concerned. They don't go away. They're only we keep repeating and repeating and repeating. And we, we won't get it. And I'm not sure why we won't get it, you know, but we're just not getting it. Um, just a, And so I'm trying to think, what other catastrophe, God, can, you, can happen? You know, at this point, the crash of the stock market, stock market, stock market I'm tired, y'all, forgive me. In 1929, I think, the Great Depression, it's a repeat. Have you noticed it's a repeat? of things that have happened in the past in history. They're all being repeated because we don't get it. We didn't we didn't get it the first time. So we come at it again. We didn't get it the same. So it keeps going on and on and on. And we keep failing these these tests or these life lessons. And we have to come back to those life lessons. And that that was my biggest thought for this morning or this afternoon why I'm trying to get some things together uh, to make my father more comfortable and uh, do some things around here, I imagine. Um, but I wonder if anybody ever thinks about that sometimes. No, I'm not deep. Um, I can't say I'm, I'm just me, I'll put it that way. I just think of, think of things uh, on a level of placing it with spirituality and how does it relate to what I've read in the Bible. Uh, because I said I wrestle a lot with some things in the Bible. I do. And so I'm always making those correlations or at least thinking about those correlations. But um, I really hope you guys are having a, in spite of a good Thursday. And um, I hope you like the video when you come in, if, if, you, if you watch it. I hope you like it. I'm steadily growing, which is a good thing. Slow and steady wins the race. So if you have not subscribed, please do. I thank those people who have subscribed, the new subscribers. God bless you. I thank you. Um, those who have been with me. I've only been, I've been on YouTube, but I haven't been a content creator for over probably, I guess, a month or so. A month, maybe. Just started doing that's real videos. So those of you who have started with me and are still with me, I appreciate you greatly. I, I truly appreciate the prayers that you're sending up for on my father's behalf. You know, uh, with the uh, dementia setting in and, you know, he's 82 and his health and just things just, that's just a part of life. That's part of the life process. That's how I have to look at it. And there are things he's going to have, he's going to deal with because of the issues that he, he's ha he has had. So, but I appreciate it more than some of you know, because I really don't speak on him outside of you guys really at this point, because my, my siblings know he's ill and they know the situation. You know, I wish they would call and check on him more uh, before he loses all thought of who they are. And I, I can only say that the big positive with this so far is, no matter what state of mind that he's in, he still remembers me. Or at this point, he still recognizes me, my voice rather, because he can't see. So that's a good consolation for me. If it goes beyond that, I'm not sure. I prepared myself mentally for that and emotionally, but for now, he could be somewhere, I'm just going to use an example, I'm trying to be funny. His mind can be somewhere in Egypt, and I can say, Daddy, and he'll, he'll still be in Egypt, but he'll know it's my voice, and he'll know, he'll respond to my voice. So I greatly appreciate your prayers, and I greatly appreciate your support. If anyone you can uh, know that would like my content, and the only reason I'm doing this particular content is because my mind is working that way as situations become bigger and bigger with this virus. And I always look at it from a standpoint of what, you know, since everybody, everybody now wants to pray, everybody now wants to have visuals and do all this, you know, so my mind automatically works like that. So I said, well, let me sit down and share that with these guys on uh, YouTube and hopefully see what their thoughts are, those who will watch. But again, be safe out there. Be, be very conscious 
where you go, where you, you know, the people you're around. If you go out, uh, you're gonna have some people have to go out regardless. You know, it took us almost an hour and a half just to get um, Daddy signed in at his doctor's appointment yesterday because they, you know, they asked you the questions: Have you been out of the country? The cough, the fever, and I understand the precaution, but it looks like if they ask you that at the first desk. They've got they've got things set up now. If you go to the first desk and they ask you that and take your temperature, I don't think anything's going to change from that point of contact 20 steps later to the next desk, and you got to go through that same process. Uh, have you been out of the country? we got to take your temperature and all this kind of stuff. So it was taxing on both of us. It was more taxing on him. And we really didn't go for him to have the surgery or have any surgery. That was on the spot. So we had to go and had to wheel him to a building that was across the street from where we were initially located to get that done. Uh, but I love my father. I love my family. So I'm going to do what I can while I can. But you guys be safe and know that I love you. But God loves you more.